Hey folks, I've been asked to give a little bit more detail, uh, dig a little deeper in um, 1-47. So this is from um, lesson 1.2.1. So section 1.2, I'll write that down so you can see it, 1.2.1, and then I'm looking at number 1-47. So I, I want to make sure we totally understand this idea of what is proportional and what is not, right? So, and then kind of be able to explain why or why not something is or is not. Oops, sorry, camera just dropped. Let's try that again. All right, all right, that was a little shaky. Sorry, folks. Okay, so um, proportional, why or why not? So if I look at A, and it gives me the scenario of Kareem is ordering uh, video games. Each costs $39.99 with a $4.85 shipping charge. Just for the sake of nicer numbers, because I want to look at this and see if there's an actual relationship, I'm going to round this to $40 and I'm going to round this to $5. So we don't get hung up by this, the cents. Okay. So. I could say each game was $40 and each and the shipping was $5 and it would be the same situation and it would determine we want to at this point determine whether it's proportional or not. So one way to look at this and, and is as a graph. Graphically we could see if something's proportional or not, okay? Um, and if I did a table of values, I could see if something's proportional or not. So if I if I did a graph, if I'm going to I'm going to start off with a table of values and then graph it. So if I have number of games and then I'm going to put the um, total cost right and again I'm, I'm doing my my games are forty dollars each my my shipping is five so if if I had one game and I was going to order one game right that would be the forty dollars plus the five dollar shipping it would be forty five dollars if I was going to order two games it would now be two times $40 plus just a single $5 shipping. So it would be $85. If I was going to order three games, it would be three times the $40 per game plus just the single $5 shipping, right? So there's a $5 shipping per order. So in this case, it'd be $125. If I was going to order four games, it would be four times the $40 plus a $5 shipping. In this case, it would be 165. So the, the question here is, is this proportional? Is it linear? Is it proportional? What does this look like? So if I were gonna, if I were gonna graph it, and I'm gonna just do a quick little graph over here, and I'm gonna have my x-axis be the number of games, and my y-axis be the total money. Uh, when we think about scale, I, I can go by ones on my number of games, right? One, two, three, four, five, and so forth. But if I'm looking at this direction, I probably want to go maybe by, let's go by 20s. So I can fit in here 20, 40, 60, 80, 100. Take it all the way up. 120, 140, last 160 okay so let's just see what this looks like if i graph it so at one game it was 45 so i can put a little dot there approximately two games it was 85 so i can put a little dot there right at three games it was 125 so i can put a dot there and then at four games it's 165 so if i if i look at this that does look linear doesn't it might be off by my little my little dot way up there but if i look at that and i see that's a linear pattern the, but the question is remember it's got to be linear so it's got to have a constant rate but it also has to cross through zero zero and if i think about this and i go on my continual line it might continue my line it's not going to cross through zero zero because at zero games right at zero games you can't figure this out because there's really there's no such thing as ordering at zero games and when you when you look at my graph, it doesn't cross through zero zero. So this one's a little tricky, but it's this five dollar shipping that throws it off to be not proportional. 
So for part, part A, it is not proportional, right? It's not a proportional relationship because of that $5 shipping fee. If that $5 shipping fee did not exist, it would be proportional. But it's that $5, right? If that line, you can see that line actually goes through about $5 is where it goes through when it hits the y-axis. Okay, so that's A. What about B? Now, B is another interesting one. B says, given a rectangle, let me move my, so we can write in a clean slate here. Given a rectangle has an area of 20 feet, 20 square feet, what is the length? for various widths, right? So I've got an, I've got a, a, a rectangle. And if I think about a rectangle with an area of 20, well, if I'm, I'm gonna build a table to kind of decide some values, if I said the width was one, what would be the length? Well, remember width times length in this case is 20. That's my area, 20 square feet. So if the width is one, then the length has to be 20 in this case, one times 20. If the width is 2, 2 times what is 20? Well, it's 10. If the width is, let's go with a nice number, 4, 4 times 5 is 20. But what if the width was 5? Can I keep going? Yeah, the width could be 5, and the length this time would be 4. Or what if the width was, let's see, 10? Then the length would be 2, and if the width was 20, then the length would be 1. What does that look like graphically? Again, looking at it graphically was going to give us a little bit of a sense of whether this is proportional or not. So I'm going to, in this case, go by twos. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. And then I can go by twos here. Two, four, six, eight, ten, twelve, fourteen, sixteen, eighteen, twenty. Uh-oh. 18 and way up here I know I'm gonna run into my put that as 20 okay so if I if I start off with my width of this is my width this is my length my width of one I have a point way up here on on 20 120 if I have a width of two then I'm right here at 10 if I have a width of four then I'm at five for my length if I'm at five on a width right then i'm at four if i have a width of 10 i'm at two and if i have a width of 20 i'm at one well looking at those dots do you see this as a linear pattern not at all that's pretty curved there's no there's no linear to that and it's never going to cross through that zero zero either so it's kind of the, this curve pattern here so definitely not proportional Okay, so the last one I want to look at, so not proportional because it's not linear. All right, and then the last one, uh, Olga ran 8.8 .8 miles in one hour and 20 minutes. Assuming Oleg, I'm sorry, I said Olga, <laughs> Oleg, assuming he continues at the constant rate, so there's a bonus, constant rate. If it's a constant rate, we know it's linear. That's a, a dead giveaway. Constant rate is linear. How long will it take him to run any number of miles? So if we're running 8.8 .8 miles in one hour and 20 minutes, right? If I'm running at a constant rate, this is going to be growing at a constant rate, isn't it? So it's going to be growing at a constant rate. So when we think of, if I was going to look at this graphically, uh, let's see if I was going to take a look at this graphically. In fact, let's do a table of values. So let's do the miles and then the time. So I'll just start with the fact that if we have 8.8 .8 miles, we know it's one hour and 20 minutes. So if it's going to be, if I double that, right, I can double that if it's a constant rate, this is, Doubling it would be 17.6 miles. So I would double that. That would be two hours and 40 minutes, right? Constant rate. 
So no matter how I keep going, I keep do doubling it, add another 8.8 .8 to it. It's going to continue to grow at a constant rate. Now, the, the real question is, is if I look at this graphically, this is a little trickier to graph, but we'll, we'll look at it. So I'm going to go my miles here, and I'm going to put approximates here. So I'm going to go by, uh, let's go by, actually, I need to put another value, so I got a good line here. So let's say if he goes another 8.8 .8 miles, that would be, so 17.6 plus 8.8. .8, is 25, 26.4. And if that was the case, it'd be another hour. So it'd be three hours, another 20 minutes, three hours and 60 minutes, which is really in this case, four hours, right? If I add another hour and 20 minutes to that. So here's my three values. So if I, if I graph that to see what it looks like, I'm, I'm gonna go by fives on my miles, five, 10, 15, 20, 25. 30, that's good enough. Okay. And then uh, hours, I can probably go by ones and just put in my minutes in between. So one, two, three, four. So my first at eight, get that quarter out of the way, at 8.8. .8, so where would that be on the graph? 8.8, .8, if this is 10, 8.8 .8 would be right about there. And it's going to be an hour and 20 minutes, so about a third of the way up. And then the next one's a 17.6 is two hours and 40 minutes. So 17.6 might be right about here. And I'm going to take that all the way up to two hours and 40 minutes. So it looks like probably right about there. And then the last one, 26.4 miles in four hours. So 26.4 right there, four hours right about there. So if I look at this relationship and I see, uh, well, my line, I got to draw my line straight. If I'm looking at that, that is linear. I think I was off with my point there. That is linear and it does go through zero, zero. So it does go through zero, zero. It is linear. Therefore, this is also proportional. Plus, this is written as a ratio. And anytime you have a ratio that goes along with the constant rate, automatically it's proportional. So yes, proportional. Uh, because we have a ratio with a constant rate, or you could say linear, it goes through zero, zero, and it grows at a constant rate. All right, I hope that helps.